Vacation season is on, and thanks to consumers racking up frequent flyer miles, travel stocks have taken off in 2023, solidly outpacing the S&P 500. The question now is, can these stocks continue their steep ascent, or will weak guidance from some group members lead to turbulence for the remainder of the year? As for travel booking stocks, reservation giant Booking Holdings, the parent company of Priceline, Kayak, and Booking.com, as well as Expedia and Airbnb, are fueling IBD's leisure travel booking industry group, which surged over 40% through July. While some carriers have seen more success than others, airline stocks are also beneficiaries of the travel boom. Delta raised its annual earnings outlook from $6 to $7 per share in July. That's up from the airline's 2022 earnings of $3.20 a share. Delta noted record advanced bookings for the summer, which is peak travel season, IBD reports. Investors Business Daily reporter Harrison Miller also said a pent-up demand following the COVID pandemic, along with dropping fuel costs, have led to more travel spending this summer. Consumer savings levels saw a nice little uptick during the pandemic thanks to the stimulus checks that were sent out and the pause on student loan payments. But now that those shutdowns are over, people are taking those long-awaited vacations and appear to be doing so in full force. So we're seeing it across airlines, cruise lines, hotel, booking stocks. Um, basically, the travel industry is up and running. Additionally, airline ticket prices are down from last year, according to fare tracker Hopper. So more than 250 million passengers are expected to fly this summer. That's up from pre-pandemic levels in 2019, according to industry association Airlines for America. And this massive upswing comes even in a difficult economic climate, senior equity analyst for Morningstar Research Jamie Katz explains. That's right. Despite the fact that inflation has been higher than um, historic levels, I think consumers are finding a way to uh, support their spending on services over goods. United Airlines CEO Scott Kirby said in the company's quarter two earnings call July 19th, while everyone else was shrinking and retiring airplanes, we started betting on the growth. I really am confident that our margins are set to grow, one to two points a year for each of the next, at least through 2026, and that this is the new normal. We've seen um, most of the airlines raise their full year outlook for 2023, and I think uh, that indicates that they have pretty decent visibility into what bookings look like over the near term. And it's not just airline stocks that have seen a boost. While the cruise industry was one of the hardest hit by COVID-19, Carnival and Royal Caribbean have been top performers in the S&P 500 so far this year, more than doubling through July. Carnival in June reported quarterly revenue that doubled and increased its annual outlook for a second consecutive quarter. And from an investor standpoint, are these stocks this summer, you know, everybody's favorite type of story, a comeback story? The travel stocks are, are a bit of a comeback story. I think the hotels did win first because there were a lot of hotels you could drive to domestically. And then you saw the airlines bounce back a little bit more, still businesses recovering their bit. And then the cruise lines were really the last in the docket to go. So I think they probably have the most uh, potential still left to uh, to come out of this situation given that they have just returned to basically full occupancy this year. The Travel Association of America is expecting vacationing to slow down later in the year, but business travel should kick back up to pre-pandemic levels going into 2024. And there could be plenty of more runway for these stocks, even if it is a bit of a bumpy ride. It really comes down to the unemployment rate, and as long as that stays low, we should be in the clear. Uh, some further headwinds could show up if rates continue to increase and prices do rise. Um, and the reinstatement of student loan payments could also take a chunk out of wallets. But if the unemployment rate stays low and consumers stay happy, they're going to keep spending. For Investors Business Daily, I'm Meredith Heyman.